We have Anna here to talk to us today um, from Real Food Bar. Uh, Anna and her husband actually started this company together um, to have a bring a higher quality, sustainable, nutritious option to the market, which with bars is huge. Um, she also worked on this idea while she was living abroad, which is so amazing. And we're really excited to welcome you, Anna. Hi, thank you so much. How, um, so I would love to just like jump right in and learn more about your product. I actually had it for breakfast this morning, which I put two and two together. They're so tasty. Um, tell us kind of about your product and why you decided to make it. First off, that makes me so happy that you had it for breakfast because I literally eat a bar a day for breakfast every morning religiously. So that is awesome. Um, yeah, so Real Food Bar was co-founded by myself and my husband, Sean, and they are delicious plant-based bars that are better for you and kinder to the planet. Um, we combine plant-based protein, prebiotic fiber, and low natural sugar with imperfect veggies in every bar. Uh, we like to say that our bars help you get more out of your day and life because it is more than just a snack. It's very balanced macronutrients. Amazing. Okay, so obviously in the bar industry, that is such a big space and just keeps growing. I would love to kind of dig into the specific problem you saw in that industry and you're like, yep, that's it. I need to fix that. Yeah, so we originally started making real food bars from recipes that I had dabbled in our home kitchen um, as a replacement for nutrition bars that I had been just stashing in my work desk. I had been constantly grabbing for bars as like an in-between meal option, and then I was quickly realizing that the bars were upsetting my stomach. They weren't providing um, natural sources of protein from plant-based resources, um, not filling me up, and then just really not providing the macronutrients that I was needing. And then come to find out later that I have an autoimmune condition, so certain ingredients just didn't really jive well with me, and realized that a lot of other people have this same problem. Um, so my co-founder and I are really active people, and so this was really a need that uh, we saw in our own personal lives. So we love being adventurous and outdoorsy, and we really love hiking and packing a bar in our backpacks when we're going on a long hike or traveling. And it's really hard to find something that like provides quality on-the-go nutrition, um, and something that we really felt good about consuming. So we really just started making these ourselves in our home kitchen. And then um, we, as we dabbled in it more, we realized as you're building out uh, a meal replacement bar, essentially, um, that things that stick together are often very sugary. Um, mm -hmm. So we really had to fine tune that and dial it down, uh, creating multiple, multiple iterations of our product before we until we finally got it to a point that we were really happy about having low natural sugar in the bar, um, high protein and high fiber. Yeah. Awesome. Um, oh yeah, go ahead. Keep going. Oh, I was just gonna say like, even in the branding, we really were inspired by a love of the outdoors. Um, so initially we have three flavors and we started naming them after places that we've hiked from around the world. Um, and then we had updated our packaging from there, but we really brought that love of the outdoors and all of our packaging. Um, so it's, it's really part of our brand ethos. That's amazing. I love that it's all like kind of interconnected with what you guys saw missing. And then so many other people have that connection. I wanted to dive into the nutrient content you talked about. Um, and just really, cause you know, sugar and bars is such an, an issue like a lot of people don't realize it's there so could you talk a little bit more about kind of that issue and your solve for that yeah absolutely uh yeah so we initially got going we used organic clover honey which um, we found had just a really sweet taste to it but then as we have pivoted actually um in the last you know, seven months now, we have just made our bars fully vegan. And that was a big challenge of not using sugar alcohols in our bars, no artificial sweeteners, and finding a good sugar source that um, would be vegan. So we actually dialed it into um, agave syrup. We found blue agave nectar had a really similar taste uh, that 
would allow us to be vegan. It's very low glycemic and we don't have to use as much of it in the product. So our bars have seven to 10 grams of natural sugar that we felt was a reasonable amount. Awesome. And then agave is such an interesting choice. So tell me what other things did you guys try? Like how long did that decision take? Oh man, that took several months of just trying a, a bunch of different um, products. Uh, so one of the other close contenders was Allulose, which has been um, seen as a, a really unique product that's just kind of emerging in CPG and uh, different products. But we found that the taste profile just wasn't right for us. Uh, it didn't really complement with our recipe. So we ended up going back to the blue agave nectar that we really liked the taste with our nut butters and the pea protein. It just really complemented it well. Ooh, yeah. Okay. And you said pea protein. That was my next question. Um, how did you guys choose that as your source for protein? Yeah, well, we knew that we needed it to be a plant-based protein. We wanted something that was going to be very easy to digest. We kept just coming back to pea protein because it is something that a lot of people can easily digest. It's dairy-free, soy-free, um, and it just it has a very neutral profile from a taste perspective. Um, so we were able to keep our protein content to 15 grams and then complement the texture with a pea protein crisp. Um, and then it was able to also hold up in terms of like a shelf life. So really in the last, um, during COVID is one of the things that we pivoted on was that we uh, spent quite a bit of that time moving our bars over to completely vegan and then working directly with our food scientists to work on that shelf life. So we're able to get our product up to a 12 month shelf life um, and really also utilize the upcycled ingredients. So I found a partner um, to help us with that aspect, we um, have a really amazing partner who has a zero waste facility. Um, they take imperfect produce and they upcycle it into vegetable powders for us. And so we have three veggie powders, kale, cauliflower, and sweet potato in all of the bars. Oh my goodness, okay. I thought I heard you say veggies earlier. I was like, hmm, good, add some veggies for breakfast. Tell us about that because they're, you can't taste it at all. Yeah, yeah, that's really the impetus for it was that like, I found a need in my own um, diet to like, be able to eat more veggies, but it's hard to do that when they go to waste, you're on the go, you're trying to find new ways and cre creative ways to eat veggies. So some of the things that I really love doing often, even on my free time is like dehydrating veggies, but I don't always have time to do that. So these imperfect um, veggies are upcycled utilizing a unique air drying technology. Um, so we get blocking all of the nutrients of them and then we're able to mask it with like these really delicious and creamy nut butters in the bars. Um, so it, it really complements itself well in, um, in the real food bars. That's amazing. And the sustainable aspect of it is huge. So what was the process like in finding a sustainable partner to get those powders? Yeah, so um, it's it's really quite a journey as an entrepreneur. Is the CPG community is really amazing. I just really leaned into um, finding that partner who could do what we were looking to do. So I got um, a part of this association called the Upcycled Food Association. And um, it was actually just like a post on LinkedIn from someone who said that they were doing this. I reached out to them and they explained um, what they were doing, we were able to partner with them and find we had this mutual bond over our missions. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's really been a, quite a process, but beautiful how it's worked out that way that we're able to upcycle um, and perfect produce in all of our bars and make such a big impact um, in reducing food waste. That is amazing. And so how does that impact your nutrient profile? Because I can imagine it elevates it quite significantly from a standard bar. Yeah, for sure. So um, our bars definitely have much more of a macronutrient dense profile than other bars on the market between our plant-based protein, 
the fiber, additional micronutrients. Um, we're high in iron, um, the micronutrients from the kale, sweet potato, cauliflower. Um, and then we've got amazing phytonutrients that come into play there. Um, polyphenols that come from our cherries, uh, which is great for muscle um, rebuilding. Uh, so it, it really all works in tandem. Um, great as like a pre or post workout snack. Great for breakfast, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. is awesome. And then, okay, I have to ask because it's 2020 and COVID is like so top of mind. You mentioned a little bit how you guys have pivoted and used your time, but I'd love you to dive in more on, I guess it's what, seven months now, six, seven months? How have you used that and what have you had to change? Yeah, so I, uh, as I kind of like briefly touched down, um, our greatest and biggest asset really is our product. It's the product, we look at it as very functional, but it's got to taste amazing. Um, so like I said, we pivoted, we made our bars vegan and upcycled, but they taste amazing. We're able to um, pivot with the texture of them. So we have more chunks of cherries and nuts and um, really we're able to dial that in based upon our customer feedback. Um, we updated our packaging and then we really have focused in on profitability and building out a strong e-commerce strategy. So um, as a scrappy startup, we mm -hmm. leaned in from the H from the CPG community and um, just finalize all of our branding assets, put that up on our website, um, worked on building out our direct to consumer with a um, monthly subscription model. We brought on interns and um, we partnered during this time. My, my husband's been an MBA student and I was able to get connected with an entrepreneurship center and then um, worked with a team of five MBA students who helped us with our business model. I'm really looking at all the unit economics and really setting us up that all of that groundwork for success. That is amazing. You've had a really productive um, COVID so far. I want to, you mentioned your monthly subscription box and I checked out your website. You guys have a cool quiz on there. I would love to like talk about your subscription box and was that something you had planned on before COVID? Yeah, it was something that we had already had up there pre-COVID. Um, but during COVID, it's just been us uh, thinking about that a little bit more, especially trials. So one thing that we did uh, just recently is we built a trial pack subscription option. So you can go onto our website, you can get um, a discounted sample pack just to try our product, just to get our product in the hands of our core customers has really been important. And that's has been part of our conduit for doing that. Um, since we can't sample the product, especially as an early stage brand, that's the most important thing is just getting the product in the hands of our core customers. That is awesome. Okay. That and subscription boxes I find is such a good way to try products. What is your most popular flavor? First off, what are your three flavors and what is your most popular? That's a really hard question to answer because every month I look at the numbers and I'm like, oh, I think that one's our most popular flavor, but this one's like trailing it really, really closely. So um, lately it's, it's peanut butter has really been popular. Everyone loves peanut butter. And then we've got cherry cashew, which has uh, big chunks of tart cherries. And then, and that's a creamy cashew butter mixed in with that. And then we have a chocolate sea salt, which is 100% organic um, dark chocolate chips with a hint of sea salt in there. Ooh, that's one I had today. So with your nut butters, how did you choose the cashew butter versus other nut? Because there's so many options these days. Uh, I wish I could say there was a, you know, science behind that one, but honestly, that was our first product that we chose, that flavor, and we personally just loved cashew butter, so we just, like, went with it, and when we first started, the bars were like, if, if all else fails, we know we love this flavor, and we will eat all of these bars, but then it actually really took off, and it's become a really, really popular flavor. Okay, cool, and you mentioned you're a scrappy startup. So can you dig into kind of what that means for you guys in this space? Like maybe some things you've been able to do that bigger brands wouldn't be able to do as quickly? 
Yeah, I would say that really means having an authentic one-on-one -on -one relationship with our customers. So often I am the one who is responding back to any customer inquiries, and I'm able to get that, gather that feedback directly from them. I love engaging with conversations with our customers over social media. And that one-on-one -on -one feedback is so invaluable and seeing how they use our products, some of the like really imaginative, creative ways that they use the product lately um, has really been awesome. Uh, and we're able to pivot a lot faster too as a scrappy startup. Like I said, like how we pivoted during COVID, um, we're able to do that because we're not, we don't have a massive supply chain like other big brands do. Um, so yeah, we're able to really iterate quickly that's awesome. And then with that social media aspect, what has been those recipes that customers have posted about or connected with you on? What's been one you're like, wow, that's like really out there, but I've got to try it. So lately I've seen customers uh, really get excited about um, Trisha's cookies. So I've never even thought about that. Like you could just microwave our peanut butter bar for a couple minutes and it's like a high protein cookie that you could like put a dollop of whipped cream on it and ice cream and it just like it's like a nice little treat for later um and then i've seen like people put our bars in kind of like as blender bombs into like their smoothies and that's really fun too that okay two very cool ideas <laughs> that i have to try this weekend now um, and we're about to jump in Q&A, but I want to make sure everyone knows where they can get you. So where can they find you and what is your Instagram handle? Yeah, our Instagram handle is at Real Food Bar. And then you can buy us at your neighborhood HEB um, or online at our website, which is realfoodbar.com. And then uh, coming soon to go Whole Foods uh, beginning of next year. <gasps> Congratulations. Thank um, you. And then what's the details on that trial subscription box? Because I feel like we're going to have some people who definitely want to try that out. Yeah, that for sure. So you can get a six-pack trial subscription for $10. Oh, okay. That's a definitely a good deal. Um, okay, so we can go ahead and dive into the plate or <laughs> question about flavors. Question. So you kind of already answered this one, but what is your favorite flavor? Is it the cashew? Oh man, uh, yeah, so I kind of had touched on it. Uh, lately though, I would say it's the chocolate sea salt, but I'm personally a sucker for dark chocolate. Um, and then it gives me a nice little treat for later when I don't really want to have a sugary chocolate bar. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, next question. Have you had any customer feedback that really stuck with you and heavily influenced the trajectory of your business? Uh, I've had customers tell us about unique ways and times that they use the bars. So when we really have dialed in and thought about like who our core customers are, I've been really surprised uh, how people are using our bars. So one of our customers had told us that they, um, she uses our bars when uh, really long days when she's like breastfeeding and needs something that she can consume in the middle of the night when she's waking up and she needs something that's healthy, nutritious, and is going to fill her up. So I'd never thought that like we should be marketing to moms or soon to be moms, um, but that just kind of like opened up a whole other uh, mind blowing um, customer segment that's very exciting. That is, that's actually like a great, I mean, that makes complete sense that that would be the case. Um, okay, next question. I know you recently changed your recipe formulation. Is there anything you can tell us about what informed the switch and what you were hoping to improve? Yeah, so we knew that we wanted our bars to be vegan. That was a big um, impetus for reformulating the bars. Um, and then we also wanted to bring out more of the texture of the bars. So our new bars have more um, that creamy nut butter, but also have bigger chunks. So very much so from a sensory texture standpoint, uh, we were looking to improve that. And then it allowed us to increase our shelf life by really, um, testing the product over time and working closely with our food scientists. Awesome. Okay. Next question. As an entrepreneur, what is something that surprised you that you've learned on your journey? 
Uh, I, I guess I would say just how difficult it is to build up a food product. Uh, I had no idea just the science that goes into building the product. Um, and I've learned a lot along the way when it comes to manufacturing, learning about lead times, um, really understanding more of supply chain. And I actually, I would say I'm also very surprised by uh, how, um, how involved so the supply chain is and traceability and how important that is knowing where your product where your food comes from um and i've been surprised that just how much uh oftentimes a manufacturer doesn't even know that so yeah that's that's really been interesting that is huge um okay next question what is it like working with a food scientist Honestly, it's seriously a game changer. I rely on our food scientists so much. I am wondering why we didn't have her from the get-go. Like I could have saved myself so much time in the kitchen if I just was like, hey, can you help me sit down and then like really fix all of our problems of like really getting um, our, our product to stick together and get all the nutritionals as, as complete as we wanted it to be from the get-go. Um, that is awesome. Uh, <laughs> do you have any plans to have a tree nut allergy friendly bar? We don't at the moment. We're definitely thinking about that for the future, but um, at the moment, yeah, all of our bars have nut butter bases. Cool. Well, we are right at time, but one last thing before we go, I'd love for you to tell us where to find you again, just for anyone who tuned in late. Um, and then they can kind of send you maybe their recommendations for a tree nut friendly bar. <laughs> yeah, so you can find um, us. So they can find our website. Yeah, yeah our website Sorry. is realfoodbar.com. And then the Instagram is at realfoodbar. And you can find us at your neighborhood HEB. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming on and spending time with us today. We appreciate it. And I know that everyone's going to be getting their Friday treats now that they know all about your bars that also have veggies in them. Yay. Thank you so much. Bye, Anna. Thanks, Anna, so much. Wonderful to hear from Real Food Bar and appreciate the time that you spent with us.